Good morning, friends, and welcome to Christ Church. It's Pastor Ryan here, and I am excited to invite you to join us today online. Uh, we have some announcements coming at the end of the service about a regathering plan and about where we are headed as a church as we go into the summer and the fall. But today we are celebrating Holy Communion. And so if you're watching this, hopefully you signed up for this and we delivered to you the communion elements. Um, but if you just showed up today and you didn't know it's communion, please stick with us. There's going to be much grace for you to receive in Jesus as we walk through our uh, journey into the presence of Christ together today. Now, this Sunday is also special for another reason. We are going to devote some time today towards remembering and grieving and thinking about uh, the news that just came out in the last couple of weeks about the mass grave that was discovered at the Kamloops Residential School, where 250 uh, children were buried, unmarked, unremembered, and unvalued. And so we want to give some special space and time for that. We will do some reflection on that in our sermon time. But I would actually like to begin our journey this morning with a moment of silence to remember them, to remember all of the families that would have been impacted by their disappearance and the lost generations uh, that our nation needs to grieve. So let's begin our time with a moment of silence, and then we will go into the prayer, the Collect for Purity today. So let's begin now. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worth worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Psalm 130. In this psalm, the psalm writer moves from despair to the realization that there is forgiveness, hope, and renewal through being committed to the Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And, and he, he will, will redeem, redeem Israel from all his iniquities. This is our story the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
let's pray the collect of the week. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant us the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may always think of those things that are good, and by your merciful guidance may accomplish the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches other to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we will take a minute to give our confession of faith. And we do this by confessing the Apostles' Creed. So let's confess this together. Let it be our lens through which we understand the scriptures. Let it be the lens through which we understand our lives and what we are going through in this life currently. So Christ Church, let us now reaffirm our faith in the words of the ancient baptismal confession. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, our text of scripture today is again Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. This is a hugely important text of scripture. I'm not going to spend much time on it today because Pastor Jeffrey just did a brilliant exposition of it. So thankful for that time. But today I want to give a bit more reflection um, as it leads us into communion today. We will actually use this text of scripture again in the fall. Today will be the last time that I'll be teaching from the book of Matthew for right now. Um, and then we'll take a break for the summer months. We're going to have lots of other preachers and speakers coming in. And so we have a lot to look forward to there. But today I want to give this a bit of reflection because it is signaling a change in where Matthew is taking us in his gospel. Now, when we covered the Beatitudes, it sets us up in a lot of ways for to be ready to receive from God his plan of salvation, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Then it brings us to this place where the community of Jesus in verses 13 through to the end of 16 is meant to be this different kind of community. It exists for the good and for the benefit of the world around it, but it's different from the world around it. And so we exist for the purpose of taking the good news of Jesus for the preservation 
of the world around us. So we're not combative or violently against it or judgmental or rejecting of all things. Instead, we treat the world around us as valuable, worth preserving. That's the analogy of the light. But also there's brokenness in the world. There's lots gone wrong. And so we're also meant to be the light, bringing words of truth, Opposing things that are evil and wrong and harmful. And so we're meant to be this community. And so we're, we're calling to the weak and to the broken to say we are a safe place for you. But we're a community. So we're in this together. Having redeemed hearts, we're seeking to redeem the world around us. But in case anybody starts to think, while Jesus' community is full of sinful, broken people, weak people, people who are longing for salvation, Jesus then goes, but let's be clear about something here. I'm also making a righteous people. I'm not taking away from God's revelation of his law of goodness. I'm not lessening the bar. Instead, actually, I'm taking the weak and the needy and the desperate who are looking for a Savior, and I'm going to give them something glorious. In the Beatitudes, we see that Jesus gives his kingdom, and he gives comfort, and that we'll inherit the earth in him, that he'll um, that He'll satisfy our longings for goodness. Here in verse 17, this is the fulfillment of that. Jesus is saying, I didn't come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill it. Meaning, I will make it possible for you too to fulfill the law. The whole promise of this section is that Jesus is going to accomplish every level of goodness. And then he's going to take all of that goodness in and of himself, and he's going to give it to his people. So now the broken are mended. Now the hungry for goodness are given that goodness, that desire in us to want to be able to do what is good and what is right. Jesus gives us the fulfillment of that desire. So anything that's missing in me, that has historically made me unable to do good, right? That poverty of spirit. Jesus is now going to make me wealthy of spirit by giving me his own goodness. Anything that was broken in me that causes me to perpetuate brokenness. Jesus is going to mend that so that I can then perpetuate love and goodness towards others. That's really what's at the heart of this text of Scripture. Jesus is saying everything God has ever said is good and humanity should aspire to. I am the fulfillment of that goodness and that aspiration. And I will then put that fulfillment into you, making you able to do good also. Making you able to be whole also. Making you um, fueled and empowered to create change and goodness in the world. Then in the last verses of this section here, Jesus says, says this in verse 20. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. In this statement, Jesus both brings actually a sense of judgment to the ways of the Pharisees and gives us a vision for what life in the way of Jesus should look like. And the first piece is this. What we tend to do in humanity is we set bars of what we define as good. And then we enforce those bars or those expectations of goodness. We enforce people to live up to that expectation. 
And we do it through shame and through guilt and through punishment. That's all the ways of the flesh. Is to go, this is what's expected of you. And I will make you fearful of failing to try and motivate you. I'll make you fearful of punishment to try and get you to change. That whole way of righteousness is really self-righteousness. And what we see in the lives and the hearts of the Pharisees in their interactions with Jesus through the, the scriptures is actually that they're not even living up to that bar. Because human ability to do good, especially when motivated by shame and guilt and fear of punishment, is abysmal. We actually have a very great inability to accomplish even the things that we want to do that are good. Jesus here is saying we're not actually taking down the bar of what's good. We are going to blow past it. We're going to exceed it because it's not based on human achievement or accomplishments. It's going to be based on Jesus, who is God and man, perfectly accomplishing humanity. Jesus becomes the new human standard that we look forward to being like. So, Jesus actually puts great expectation upon his community because it's based on his fulfillment. It's based on his provision for them. He's going to raise the bar of goodness because he's going to raise the amount of provision given to accomplish that goodness. Now, all of this that we've been talking about, this new community that follows Jesus, that can be honest about their poverty of spirit, and then exist for the good and the pre preservation of the world around us, embodied with the righteousness of Jesus, is meant to do good in this world. This is a tough text of Scripture to think about when what we are dealing with as a nation, with this colossal news of so much grief. Now, when we talk about the residential schools and Canada's history with the Indigenous and First Nations people, there is a lot here to grieve as a nation. It's compounded further when we think about the church's role in that trauma, in that dark history. But more importantly than both of those things, is the fact that the our neighbors, the indigenous people here on the island and throughout Canada, the First Nations peoples, that we that are our neighbors now, have great grief and sorrow over what has been uncovered in Kamloops. But what's sadder still is that that is just the tip of the iceberg. And this is not history past. This is present. The last residential school didn't close till 1996. When we as a people are aware of our heart stories, our own traumas and pain of the past, we of all people should be aware of the massive impact that would have happened to an oppressed violated and um, exploited people over many generations. There's much to grieve here. Some historians refer to this as the long assault on the First Nations people. From 1857 to 1971, over a hundred years of blatant uh, uh, aggression and with the intent of annihilation from our government has been committed against this people. So you think just about that, trying to move them off their lands and into reservations, taking away their rights and their freedoms, 
the inability to move freely, the inability to work freely. And then what we see is removing from them the custody of their own children. We have traumatized whole nations in the history of Canada. And the church married itself to that power of empire, using the name of Jesus and the gospel of Jesus to become agents of harm on behalf of the government to the First Nations people. We have much to grieve here. Now, you've heard me refer to this in the past, and this is something that I'm quite passionate about. If we are hoping to build a church according to the way of Jesus here on the island, we must engage with this history. We must immerse ourselves in this present reality. And we must do so in the same way that Jesus has done for us. And so to do that, I think we have to begin by being honest about what has happened. There's much redemption that I have faith for in this arena of discussion within the island and within our nation. I have much hope here. I believe that redemption and reconciliation is possible. And I believe that there are lots of good works that we can get involved in to do, but now is not the time for that. We must begin with the same way Jesus began with us. The whole story of the incarnation of Jesus, of God taking on flesh, is entering into our story, understanding us the way that we wished we would be understood, feeling what we feel, embodying the story that we have lived, in order that he would collect all of the wounding and the sin and the brokenness and the terrors and the trauma and take it to the cross for a solution. We must go with Jesus to do the same with Indigenous and First Nations peoples. We need to enter into this dark period of our nation, this reality of what's taking place in the world around us right now. We have to care about these stories. I'll be honest, as a prairie kid, my family um, living on the edges of reservations, that tense relationship that takes place in Canada. What I learned growing up, just intrinsically through my life and through my context, was to look down upon First Nations peoples, to look at the unhealth that took place within those communities and blame them for it. When we think about alcoholism and drug abuse and um, violence towards one another and all these types of things, we, we, we often, as the white community within Canada, look at those peoples and say, oh, they should be working harder, they should pull up their bootstraps. And so we look down upon them, we're threatened by their presence. In the years that have gone on, I've worked in many reservations, the Siksika Reserve and Blood Reserve in Alberta, and as I've grown in relationship with these people, i become aware of the fact that these are a community of victims that we have created as a nation, and they are a strong and honorable people who have refused to be defined by that story despite its impact upon them. When you hear their story of settlers coming in, ingratiating, making promises and treaties, and then breaking them as soon as possible, when we hear about them being relocated and taken from their holy places and from their homes, when we hear about the violence and assault and abuse that is committed against them for generations, the trauma 
that we see in their bodies and in their faces when we talk to them is something that we need to begin to unearth, unveil, and be honest about if we're going to have true and meaningful relationships. The brokenness that we see has been perpetuated, has been caused by our presence. And so meaningful reconciliation requires that we enter into that very real story, that very real reality that we have been a part of creating. The Canadian government has covered this up, has covered even the role of the church up in this. The stories of the residential schools are of removing kids from parents under the guise of in order to care for the parents, but the, or to care for the children. But the parents and the communities were traumatized and broken by the very same government that then promised to take care of those kids. And so the church comes into that story and says, we will do it with underfunded projects and undermanned. And they did not rightly represent Jesus. They did not replicate the love and care of those families. And what we have come to see increasingly, this mass grave acts as a sign. To go, if these children can die and be buried without being named, without being remembered, without being valued, what does that reveal about the culture of these residential schools? What other types of spiritual abuses are taking place, of shaming, of killing the Indian in order to save the child? Stories upon stories of physical abuse. More sexual abuse than we can handle even thinking about. All of these led to an unmarked grave where kids' bodies were hidden. This is an atrocity. For a nation to commit, how much more so for the community of Jesus to be part of this, to be the hands that struck to be the mouths that shamed, to wear a collar and harm. What I am calling us to for the month of June of what's left of it is this, that we would take great care to listen to these stories. The first thing I would ask is for every member of Christ Church Oceanside and those who are joining us, online to read the Truth and Reconciliation report that was published. We will provide a link for that in the comment section of this post. Read the Truth and Reconciliation stories. Hear it from this organization that comes in to represent the voices of victims. To read books and articles and blogs and stories of Indigenous and First Nations people from their own mouths. Read it, take it in, and join them in their sorrow that we would then together look for redemption and restoration. These are the types of initial steps that we need to take as the body of Christ. We are meant to preserve the First Nations culture, culture, to redeem it of where darkness has seeking to overcome it. This is part of our call as being the people of Jesus. And so I would invite you into this. Now the vision and hope in the way of Jesus is this. Follow Christ into the heart of these stories. Listen intently as though it were your own. Maybe take a trip to Mulberry Books in Parksville or Qualicum Beach and ask them to read some Indigenous writers and First Nations writers. 
as we send out resources through this month, prioritize them, make space and time for them. And to express our care and our grief and our blessing to our Indigenous and First Nations neighbors. We must turn our heart towards the darkness that has been hidden for too long within our nation and invest our hearts there. Consider writing our local MP or MLA and expressing your support for further investigation into the other residential schools. And let's take time to mourn this. And that let that be our first step towards meaningful action of reconciliation. Now, as we turn our heart to the Lord's table, I think it would be helpful for us to return back to the Beatitudes for our confession and for our absolution. So let's pray this together. Jesus, where we have not followed you in the way of supreme blessedness, forgive us. Where we have hidden, suppressed, or refused to recognize our poverty of spirit, forgive us. Where we have not mourned the impact of our sins upon you and others, forgive us where we have trusted in the strength and power of man, our own or others, forgive us, where we have not hungered and thirsted after goodness and truth, forgive us, where we have shown anger and hate towards others instead of mercy, forgive us, where we have not genuinely loved you and our neighbors from the heart, forgive us, where we have made conflict, competition, and war instead of peace, forgive us. Where we have refused to justly or unjustly sacrifice our comforts with joy, forgive us. And now as we receive forgiveness by the love of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ in the cross, the resurrection of Christ that would give us the fulfillment of the law and the ability to do good, we receive these blessings in the Beatitudes. Jesus, we receive union with you and all the blessings which are the fruit of that union. We receive the kingdom of heaven and all of its spiritual riches and resources. We receive the comfort you bring to our guilty and broken hearts. We receive your immeasurable provision for us, that the whole earth is yours to give. We receive the satisfaction of finding all that we need and desire in your goodness. We receive your forgiveness and mercy through the cross of Jesus Christ. We receive the privilege of seeing God in the face of Jesus. We receive our positions as beloved adopted daughters and sons in Christ Jesus. And we receive the kingdom of heaven as our source of replenishment in times of suffering. And so, Lord, we give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death 
and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So remembering his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All, all, all glory and honor are yours, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you. May it preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed upon him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. May it preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Will you pray with us, please? O Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning humble and penitent. We pray for your Holy Spirit to scrub our hearts, our souls, and our minds and to remove anything which is not of you and you alone. We are so grateful to you for our redemption through the cross. Write this truth on our hearts and keep us mindful of that huge sacrifice every day of our lives. Lord, Lord hear, hear and have, have mercy. mercy. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you all those affected by the discovery of the remains of the little children from the residential school in Kamloops. Our hearts break for them and for whatever they endured, alone, scared, and vulnerable. We pray that somehow every single one would be identified, recognized, honored, and remembered. We pray as well for the families of these children and for all the residential school survivors. Help us to determine what needs to be done and prepare the path to reconciliation, respect, and peace. Convict our leaders to commit to the road to justice, restoration, 
and change in our nation. Lord, Lord hear, hear and, and have, have mercy. mercy. We ask your blessings on all children and young people in our care and pray for their protection and safety. We pray also that they would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, hear and have mercy. Holy Spirit, direct the rulers of the world. Fill our leaders with talents and discernment to seek your good and perfect will. We pray for peace around our chaotic world, especially in the Middle East. We ask for your Holy Spirit to provide a renewed energy and vision for those who are tiring in the battle against injustice and oppression those exhausted by the struggle with poverty and hunger. Lord, hear and, and have, have mercy. mercy. We turn now to our country of Canada and all its leaders, national, provincial, and civic. Lord God, we pray that they might be convicted by you to act justly, make decisions wisely, and remember the Christian principles that founded our nation. We pray today for spiritual guidance and support for Anik and all our leaders and members, and that you would make the Anik priorities transformational realities in our churches. Lord, Lord hear, hear and, and have, have mercy. mercy. We are compelled to pray earnestly for your manifest presence in our own parish, services, and all the ministries at Christ Church Oceanside. We lift up to you our church council, as well as Pastor Ryan and his wife Jackie, that you would inspire, protect, and bless them and their families. Lord, Lord hear, hear and, and have, have mercy. mercies. We pray that you would heal all those in our own parish who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, and that you would give them courage and hope in their troubles and continue to bring them the joy of your salvation. You are our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Lord, hear and, and have, have mercy. mercy. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Well, my friends, I hope you hear my heart today. In this desire to enter into the grief and the sorrow of our neighbors, to hear their stories and to understand the trauma that has been perpetuated against them as a nation and as the church, that we might begin a long journey of being a part of reconciliation and restoration in the name of Jesus. Now, on another note, we have actually some good news for you today about regathering. So beginning next Sunday, which is June the 13th, we will again host an in-person service at Nanus Place at 10 a.m. Now, all that we will do there, the sermon, the liturgy, the Lord's table and worship will all be live. And so if you want to be a part of that and you're ready for that next step, you can sign up for that on our website. But because it is limited to 50 people again, we will also continue to offer church online. Now, what we've decided as a leadership team and with council is that this summer, what is kind of shaping up for us is that June, we will begin the process of finding our feet with in-person gatherings. July, I am going to be taking some much needed vacation time, but we will continue to offer both online and in-person options for you. Come August and into September, it looks as though if all continues to go the way it is going now, the, um, the numbers will be increased of how many people we can have in person. So our hope through August and September would be that would be the time that we can begin welcoming the new people who have joined us through the pandemic online. So through August and through September, our focus is really going to be about creating again our sense of family and community and friendship and enjoyment of Christ in gathering together as the body of Christ. So we're very much looking forward to that, obviously. And through the months of August and September and into October, um, Jackie and I are going to take a big part in hosting people just for hangout time, because we can, um, at local beaches and parks where kids can play, where we can play beach volleyball and bocce ball and, and just be together, enjoy friendship. So hopefully in the coming weeks, we will uh, announce a time in August for a big church picnic of some kind. Um, and then the beach feasts will resume every Sunday after church. We'll meet up at a beach as many people as we can, according to the BC requirements, um, for fellowship, for time together, for potluck, for play, for laughing, um, and just for being together in the presence of Jesus. So much to look forward to this summer, but we're also going to be taking it slow. And so our hope is that joy and hope would be renewed in you. Thank you for your faithfulness and your support and your patience in this pandemic. I'm, I just cannot commend the leadership and the culture of our church enough. You've just done so well always holding to faith in Jesus, always loving your neighbor, and with patient perseverance. Um, you've just done so well. And so we're really looking back to finding our new normal in the coming year. Okay, my friends, now for the blessing. I bless you with the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the presence and comfort of the Holy Spirit to fill your heart, your mind and your body, and to take you out into the world as salt and light for its preservation, for the goodness in this world that needs to be uh, valued and held, and to push back against the darkness in meekness and in confidence. And I pray this in his name. Amen. We'll see you next Sunday.